I hope everybody's doing great. We're excited to have you guys here on this Wednesday night webinar live stream. We do as our part of our mass media summit mastermind. Uh, we do these webinars every Wednesday night, usually for some sort of topic uh, with marketing, monetization, when it comes to your podcast or your online summits and things like that. Uh, well, tonight's is all about kind of your virtual online summits. We've been doing uh, a lot of great stuff over the last five, six years with online summits and with everybody and their dog uh, who's had the idea for a virtual summit uh, saying they're an expert online the last couple of days. I thought it was important to come on and actually, hey, let me share some of the things that we do because we've been doing this for a while. We've got a lot of people reaching out to us, uh, especially in the last 72 hours about, hey, how can you help me with my event? Or, hey, tell me about a virtual event. We don't want to cancel our big event we've got. And so we're really excited about this topic tonight. And it's kind of, this is kind of an add on to one that we did a couple of weeks ago. And we'll get to that in a second, but really excited to, to get on this topic tonight. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of great stuff. So we're going to dive straight into the, 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 oops, let me hit the right thing here. Drive right straight into the content with you guys tonight here for you. So, um, come on, why is it not doing that? Why is it not letting me do that? Okay, let's do this. Here we go. Share screen helps with the right thing yes i'm coming to you live from mars i thought it was corona safe here but once again thank you for being here i know that you guys um guys and gals have many options and things we're honored that you guys are here tonight i promise give a, a plenty of good content and leave plenty of time for live q a as we go along if there's a question you want to ask on the, the slide and it's relevant to what we're talking about hey ask it if it's something generic and not uh, associated with that slide, then just wait till the very end because we'll leave plenty of time for Q&A for specific questions. And we're going to go through a lot here in this hour. may run a little bit longer than an hour, but I want to say thank you first and foremost for being here. Um, appreciate all of you. So first of all, if you guys don't know me, haven't heard of me, Scott Carson, I'm an entrepreneur and digital marketer since 2004. Now, it's hard to believe it's been <laughs> 16 years since I said goodbye to my last W2 job. Um, I focused the last 16 years really on the distressed note niche of real estate for the most part. I was a mortgage banker for a few years. It was in the paper game anyway, but really for the last 12 plus years, that's been focused primarily on a very small niche within a very big aspect of things. And we've really done a great job of carving out our expertise in what, we're, what we've done over the last 12 years. And let's face it, hey, what happened 12 years ago? It looks like we're in the middle of it happening of some sort. So. Uh, with that, we've purchased over half a million dollars, half a billion dollars in debt. We not only do what we do, but we also we talk about what we do, but we also teach others how to do what we do. And uh, very excited that we've helped through our workshops, our online summits, thousands of investors really take their business to a whole different level. Uh, I've been an educator and teaching what I do since 2010. In 2014, I was actually awarded the Educator of the Year in my field. And I was a runner-up last year. Or no, yeah, in 2018, 2019, I was a runner-up for that. Uh, but I've been doing virtual online summits since 2016, and I have to give a big shout out to that pretty lady in the photo there with me, Stephanie Goodman, my VP of Operations, and my uh, signature over there. Um, we started doing virtual summits in 2016 because it came from failure. We had an event we scheduled in Houston. Uh, we dropped a lot of money in, about 20 grand in marketing and other hotel costs and things like that, and it was a complete bomb. Nobody signed up for it, and we canceled it because it was just not a, it just bombed. Uh, we thought it'd be a great event. All our speakers are excited to come for it. But what spawned from that failure just turned into what we're an expert in today. And we are doing a, an amazing job with our online summits and help, have helped quite a few other people launch successful summits as well. Business is doing well. But we see virtual summits anywhere from 50 to 1,500 attendees. 50 to 1,500. The first online summit I did, we had 75 people in it for a three-day workshop, all paid customers. And I stopped doing hotel events from that point on. I said, screw it. I'm not going to do an, uh, an in-person summit where I got to hire a hotel, an A and V, worry about people showing up. No, we're going to do it all online. So we're excited about that. We've done events that had as many as over 100,000 plus viewers, people joining in from all across the country and all across the world as well, too. So we've got paid events. We've also done some free events as well, too, for you. Uh, for those that are podcasters out there, I've been podcasting for roughly three years now. We have three shows that kind of, uh, two of them spawned off of our main show, the Nook Closure Show podcast, which has about 600,000 downloads and 15 million listeners across uh, our nationwide network of syndicated radio networks. But um, we have seen a huge boost of one of our podcasts is a just a special event 
um, that's brought in almost 100,000 downloads. Another one is just a Monday night webinar we've done for about eight years that we started doing as a podcast that's brought in at least 30,000 downloads, okay? But all together, we've done over 700,000 downloads and episodes, sorry, 700 episodes. Downloads are a little bit bigger than that, but we know how to kind of really drive traffic. We know how to get people listening. And the beautiful thing is if you've got some sort of event you're doing or you're, you've got a podcast, an online summit can be a great way to really ram home and really um, boost, give you a nice adrenaline shot to your listeners, your audience, and really can help you monetize your time as well. Besides just getting a sponsor for your podcast, you can find add a lot more value to your sponsorships and also your peers out there. So some of our niche virtual summits to give you a bit of an ideal kind of things. We started off doing our virtual note buying workshop. This is a three-day workshop that we've been doing for about five years now. Three days, me teaching, I bring on about three to four speakers. We will do three to four of these a year. Okay, this is kind of our nuts and bolts kind of ABC workshop that we do. Four or five, like I said, it runs from Friday through Sunday. It's usually, well, we're using it via Zoom, like we're doing it for here, but it's very interactive. We, like I said, we've had anywhere from 50 to uh, 275 on those workshops before. Okay, we'll re record it, we turn it into uh, an evergreen content for our speaker, for the uh, attendees so they get to watch the replays. They get to watch the replays before they sign up for it, so it's an extra, extra bonus. So one workshop works in kind of three ways for us. Uh, another thing we do, Note Camp. This is something we started three years ago. This is our online summit, online convention. Um, we've had anywhere from 34, 35 speakers over uh, three and a half days. We use two Zoom rooms a lot for this. Um, this is a, a great event. This has re really revolutionized my niche in the field. We bring on our peers. We bring on some of our students. We bring on our vendors. We bring on other speakers to sell on our platform. But this is done by having the Note Camp, and this is season one, but we've actually done it seven times. We did six regular traditional, and we even got nichier with a smaller one called Note Camp Commercial. We even took it smaller of a niche inside of a niche. That did really, really well. Um, we did that. Was the And the beautiful thing is we turned Note Camp into a podcast as well, okay? And so we get a lot of listeners, we're able to monetize the event after the event was, hey, we got sponsorships available. If you want to be on there, we're getting so many listeners on these episodes. And we still see roughly about 5,000 listeners a month just to a variety of either Note Camp season one, two, or Note Camp commercial season three, which is a beautiful thing. That's extra listeners, extra sponsorship opportunities, and of course, we monetize both of the events. We sell sponsorships, we get affiliates, we sell tickets to it. These are all paid virtual summits. We don't rarely, we rarely do free events. I'll get to that in a second. And then one of the things we've been doing recently, last month, we're doing again this month, is we're doing our kind of our mini summit. It's a one day summit called Note Weekend. Uh, we charge for this anywhere from uh, 99 bucks that we charged last month. We had about 45 on it. Um, we just dropped it to 19 to help with uh, make it a little bit more affordable for everything going on with the coronavirus stuff. But those people lead into our virtual workshops, our summits, and things like that, too. But that's also a paid event. I don't care if I'm doing it. I usually want to at least charge a buck of some sort to get people to sign up for. And we'll get to some more of the monetization strategies in a second here. But uh, other, uh, some of the other virtual summits that we've helped launch, we've helped advise on as people reached out to us. Uh, one is, uh, well, actually, this is a virtual one. This is one that, sorry, I got the slide out of the way. Uh, Mass Media Podcast Summit is something we did uh, in January. We had 348 attendees on. Uh, most of those were paid. A few people were free, but most of those were paid. We turned in a podcast on that, but this was a great podcast. And this helped leverage our knowledge with podcasting and also brought speakers and friends on that I've learned a lot from. So it was a really great stuff. We're turning that into a podcast, but we were able to monetize that with affiliates and stuff like that as well from our speakers and sponsors. Um, we did International Podcast Day back in 2018. I was getting kind of new in the podcast arena, this was uh, June, September 30th, 2018. So I've been podcasting for right about a year. We got 25 podcasters to come on over an eight hour period. We did 20, second, 20 minute sessions with each of them, ran nonstop, had uh, close to 100,000 views on the videos. It also led to a lot of speaking opportunities by me being uh, guest booked or also bringing other people on that I like. It just helped me build a name for myself in an industry that I was kind of new to, which would be very beneficial. And then we did National Social Media Day a couple times. National Social Media Day is June 30th of each year. First one we did was just a, uh, we were a sponsor for. Uh, the next one we did, uh, the second time we did it, we did a 27 hour live stream. We had uh, 30 speakers from 14 different countries. We ran from midnight 
East Coast time to midnight the next night on the Pacific time. That's why 27 hours, over 150,000 views, 150,000 views. We did it just to try to see what we did. We didn't monetize, we don't offer sponsors. We had a lot of opt-ins, we had a lot of viewers. I mean, we're still seeing views on this today. This led to a lot of opportunities for us to build, uh, get our name out there uh, as, a, as, a, as a byproduct of what we're doing and our marketing aspect of that. That in turn led to us some stuff that we've helped launch, okay? Um, Quest Trust, they're a self-directed IRA uh, custodian here in uh, Austin, Houston, Dallas. Uh, they've now been doing their uh, Masters of Tax Avoidance online bootcamp for three years now. They average over 300 signups for their one day, eight to nine hour event. And they're also doing some more stuff online, but we helped, we set them up. We helped them out with saying, hey, here's how, what we do, here's what we do. 300 paid signups for their Masters of Tax Avoidance. I don't know what their one was this year, but I know that they had at least, it's a th actually a three day, sorry, down to one day. It was three day, one year, two, uh, two day, one year, they kind of changed it up a little bit. But 300, 330, 360, I imagine they have close to 400 plus. But that leads to them helping getting people to come to their actual uh, in-person summit they hold one year as well. After the Quest Trust Bootcamp, they've, like I said, they've done that three now, it's a big, big thing for them. Uh, we've helped our buddy Dan Hanford with Multifamily Nation, uh, Multifamily Investor Nation. Um, first time he did this, he had about a hundred and uh, about 290 people on it. Third time he did it. I think he had 397. And the third time he did it now, I think he had over a thousand people. He has made use of what we taught him and leveraged it with sponsorships, got some corporate sponsors. He's made 10 grand the first time, made about a hundred grand the second time. And no, sorry, 25, 30 grand the second time and close to over a hundred grand with sponsorships. Cause he's able, he's built systems that we taught him how to do. He's also built some value because he's done it again and again. He's done it with different 30 speakers. And, uh, you know, we've had a few people that have attended Dan's events uh, and realized, man, this is a great thing. Like Jim Ross uh, put his, his self-storage summit together from learning from Dan, which learned from us. So we're pretty excited about that. And then, of course, our buddy Merrill Chandler with CreditSense and GetFundable.com. He turned his whole business model around and started doing online two-day events. And it completely revolutionized his business. A lot easier, a lot less travel also a lot more profitable for him as well. So we're proud of what Merrill's done. Um, we've also helped Jay Helms with a W2 Capitalist, which is an online wholesaling summit that was uh, in next month. With that stuff, an event that he does not have to cancel. He can run as normal. Uh, we're helping Realty 411, which is a, uh, they host a uh, big events across the country. As far as real estate investors, they had an event set for Irvine next weekend, 400 people RSVP'd. Now they can't have that in person now. So now we've converted it to an online event and we're helping them out with that. And then Outlier Podcast, so you guys are familiar, that they had an event scheduled for May in Columbus and they were getting ready to cancel it. And I reached out to Ever, like, no, 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 don't cancel it. Turn it into an online event. So we're helping Ever out with that. So we're really excited about a lot of the things that we've done to help people out with their stuff. So let's talk about what a virtual summit is not first and foremost. First of all, it's not just a webinar. It's not a conference call. It's not a Facebook Live. You know, I've done plenty of Facebook Lives over the years, but it's not, it's not a virtual summit. It's not a YouTube Live. It's not a LinkedIn Live. It's not an Instagram TV doing, going solo. It's not a podcast episode. It's not, definitely not a pitch fest. And that's the thing that I think a lot of people get into. Oh, is it, what's the difference? Now you can use a variety of all of these things can go into a virtual summit, but by themselves alone, that's not a virtual summit. All right. And that's why I think a lot of people do mean I have just do a Facebook live. How do I get people on? It's not the same thing. The virtual summits that we bring on and do though, they do incorporate a variety of those things and some of the tools and technology we use, but we like to keep it simple. Scott, you know, keep it simple, stupid uh, as a policy that we believe in. So when we do our virtual summits, we like to keep it simple as far as the technology and getting people into the events. Now we don't wrong. We've got a, a great system. We've got a great uh, 120 point plan workbook that we kind of go through when we're doing an event a variety of different things that have specific times but and they do include yes we will do a facebook live yes we'll do a conference call via zoom or a webinar to promote people into or we'll use zoom as a webinar feature to deliver the event or we'll share it to linkedin or we'll share some stuff to LinkedIn. each thing has its place but by themselves they are not a virtual summit by themselves so what is a virtual summit and this is kind of what we divine define what a virtual summit is. And I like to say it's either a one to multi-day event. Some people do a one day mini summit. They'll do a three day, like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Some people try to do it at night. Some people do it multiple weekends. Some people will do a little bit each evening. Um, sometimes it's recorded. 
uh, or live. Uh, I'm not a fan of just a pre-recorded session. I like doing them live and then sharing the replays. Um, I'll get to that reason why. You can do both. Often four or more speakers. Uh, it, it's hard to have a lot of speakers squeeze into just one day because if you give everybody about an hour, max, you can have a six to seven individual sessions. Yeah, you can try to squeeze it down to 30 seconds or 30 minutes, but that's not really helping your speakers and it's hard to get information out there. But the most thing is you want to bring content to the day before, content experts of some sort to your summit if you're gonna do a one day or more, uh, it's all about the content. Um, we've used Reversal Summits for ex to replace conferences, expos. Many people have done hotel style events and they just live stream it as an extra bonus from a live event. And the people on the live stream don't really get noticed. They don't get to ask the questions. It's just kind of a, hey, fly on the wall view. We don't want to do that. When we, how we treat a virtual summit is that, hey, you have, everybody has really a VIP front row seat to the event. Yes, we want to cater to your questions. We want to, to ask questions. We want you to be interactive. And there's some great things that we do to help out with that. And you can share this online, um, you know, with like a live stream. If you want to share it, you could also just share it to a Facebook group, a private group. I'm sure it'd be social media. Um, you can do free or paid events. I don't like free events unless, of course, I'm trying to build a list. Uh, if I'm doing something, because uh, free has no value most of the time, all right? A lot of people use free events as a big list grab, but that's, I think people are tired of a list grab. They want something of content. They want something of structure. They don't want a tease, a bourgeois. They want a steak and potatoes kind of thing when it comes to it. And so paid events are always going to be much more valuable Good. There's a variety of things. List building is great for a free event, but if you're looking to sell a class, workshop, mastermind, coaching, or a product of some sort, a paid event is going to be much more valuable because somebody who's at least invested at least a buck is that much more valuable because they've made a buying decision to be there. There's value in them showing up. They've got an investment. They're more likely to be there than a free event. I'm like, ah, eh, if I forget about it, who cares? Uh, I'm a big, big, big advocate. Is this a way to build community? And especially if you're trying to build a community, this is a great way to build an online community, something that you get to know, something that gets your name out there. I mean, when you surround yourselves with other experts or other peers in your field, you're naturally going to accelerate people. Like, oh, hey, that was great. And, and some of the events that I've done, I've reached out to, I guess you could say, our biggest competitor to say, hey, do you want to speak on our summit? And it's always a, it's always a good thing when people say no, 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 but then they come around like the second or third time. Uh, yeah, I would really love to speak on your event. You're like, yeah, cheeky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but you build value over time. You show that it's there. Because what, what happens a lot of times, we've had, there's been other online note events that came in and were gone. They were like a one-shot thing. They didn't really do it well. They tried to record it. They tried to do the, the least amount possible. And you can't do it. You have to do what's going to be the best for your listeners, the best for your attendees. It should not be about you. It should be about what's the best for them in delivering content, value, networking, and other uh, things that they're interested in. Okay. You can, the beautiful thing about doing a virtual summit is you can have local speakers, national speakers, international speakers, all from comfort of your home. I mean, we've had people that have actually spoken on our summits that were at somebody else's in-person event, and they were like, no, we want to speak on Scott's event because we know there's value. We know that, hey, there's going to be people there. Uh, you're going to market me more in your virtual summit than this guy who's putting on an event or gal's putting on an in-person event is not marketing that well. Let's face it, everybody. It's harder and harder and harder for people to put butts in the seats. It's extremely difficult now to put people butts in the seats of an in-person event now with everything going on, right? But it's not that hard now, especially the online. Everybody's looking for online learning. I mean, it's been around for a while. You know, we've done a really good job of honing what we do and adding a little bit each time that we do an event to really maximize it. And we, you know, we're excited about that. So let's talk first about the eight biggest myths. And I'm sure you guys have some complaints or why an online summit wouldn't work. If you wanna throw those in the chat roll, if you're, what, if you're here in Zoom, you know, give me what your biggest, like, oh, what's, what's your biggest fear factors, your biggest myths when it comes to an online summit? And I kind of talked to a few people and we tried to put eight, I think, of the most common ones together, all right? And I'm gonna share those here with you. I'm just, I'm just pulling up something here real fast so I can, I can gauge anybody's commenting online or following along on Facebook here. So they're big eight minutes and it kind of falls down to this in a variety of ways. So this not, uh, there we go. There we go. All right, it is working here. Let's turn that off. So, all right, so the eight biggest myths that we see all the time, 
as one is that people aren't don't sign up. Oh, they're not going to sign up for a virtual event. We'll get to that in a second. Another one. Oh, networking at a virtual event just sucks. Okay, we'll cover that in a minute. That's actually a big no if you know how to do it right. Um, you can't sell or monetize online. This is the thing when you have a lot of educators. They're like. Well, you know, nobody's going to buy my product. Well, yes, they will. Let me show you how to do it. There's a way to specifically do it. There's a way to make sure that to pitch, it's a different pitch than in front of an audience. It's a different pitch doing it online. Um, you can't replicate in-person event. Yeah, you can. I mean, there's a few things. Like, I'll give you an example. I was talking with somebody just the other day. And she had an event. It was a day and a half from basically 5 o'clock on a Friday night to 9 o'clock and then all the next day. And I looked through her schedule, like there's only one thing that you can't replicate on this. You can still do an in-person event. I mean, an online event, you just can't duplicate this one thing. You've got to twist up a little bit, okay? Um, the speakers won't show up. I heard this at actually a virtual summit event that I went to and the speaker's like, oh, you got to worry about the speakers won't show up. I'm like, what? In all the times we have done an online virtual summit, we've only had one speaker, actually two speakers, one speaker, his flight was delayed getting into it. So we were able to reschedule him for the next time. And the other one, he completely botched it from what his assistant told him to be. So we were able to fix that. But we have basically, if you look at all the <laughs> online virtual summits we've done, two speakers out of over 200, that's a very, very small thing. Speakers will show up. All right, we'll get to that. Uh, the technology is too hard or expensive. Most people think it's too difficult. It's gotten easier and easier and easier as technology goes along. And so we'll go through some of those things as well. Uh, my, some people are like, well, my list is too small. I don't have a following. Um, you know, we'll cover how to overcome that aspect of things. Uh, or people's like, my audience won't show up. Well, we'll talk about what your audience looks like and how we can overcome that as well. So let's go to the first one. People don't sign up. That's a myth. The actual fact is people will sign up. You just have to talk to them. You have to get out in front of them. 80% of sales comes after the fifth contact. You've probably heard this before. This is the truth. I'm always amazed that people have an email list and they send an email out once, but then they never follow up with that list and they wonder, well, nobody's going to call, contact me. Nobody's going to call me. Nobody's going to sign up my, for my stuff. And when I find out that they don't send emails out on a regular basis, that's the reason. You got to realize that most people, especially email is still an effective way if you've got a database. Only about 20% of people are going to open your email the first time. You're only going to convert about 2 to 3% of that, your sales in the first email. 48% of people never send a follow-up email. You need to follow up. This is why we talk about uh, you need to start marketing 30 to 60 days out. Now, I've done a virtual event two weeks out and did well, but it's also because I already had resources in place. But if you're starting brand new and you're thinking about doing an online event of some sort, maybe an online meetup group, an online networking event because you can't meet in person, start sooner than later. Start at least, you know, a lot of people are doing meetup groups. Hey, start two weeks out. Hey, we're going to do this virtually this time. So meeting for dinner or meeting for coffee at the rec or the, the re restaurant. You know, start marketing the sooner the better. I think 90 days is too far out, but 30 to 60 days when you start that off. I mean, we put the Mass Media Podcast Summit together on December 27th. We had it on January 24th, 348 signups because we followed along. Okay. You have to market multiple times and different ways. You can't just do email. You just can't rely on Social media posts. You have to do this. It has to be a good mixture of hitting people in multiple places with multiple things. You just say, hey, I've got an event. Show up for it. No. Hey, what's the theme of your event? Who are you speaking? Why should I show up and listen to uh, Charles Wilson speak about his event? Well, you need to listen. You need to show up because Charles Wilson is an expert in owner finance notes. And he's great at what he does. Okay. Um, you need to provide uh, multiple ways of marketing. Email is obviously a great thing. It's going to drive a big thing. Social media is important, obviously. You can either do free or pay traffic. I wouldn't get too crazy on Facebook ads. If you're going to do something on Facebook, do like a dollar a day, something simple. There's a lot of great places out there. You can start an Eventbrite page, start a Facebook event page, and share it to different groups. So a lot of free traffic out there. Uh, you do need to have a decent website or a landing page. I like lead pages. What we do when we do our uh, virtual summits, we create a quick lead pages, one page, a very simple website, you know, talking about the schedule, talk about who's going to be on there and share kind of the opt-ins and stuff like that. It allows for us to also insert some videos talking about, hey, here's what's so great about the Mass Media Summit. Here's what's so great about the Note Camp event, okay? The most important thing to get people to sign up with is have provide quality content and speakers. Now, what you have to do about your event is make sure it's not the same. Like you, I would not want to go out and do a multifamily event. It's not going to have near the amount of people showing up as the multifamily investor nation because they do it for. I'm not going to go out and create 
a self storage uh, virtual event. Jim Ross is doing a great job. I'm going to find something that most people don't have. And that's what we found with the note camp thing is that you had conferences and conventions, but people didn't want to fly out. They didn't want to spend money coming out because they couldn't take the time off of work. So we found something and brought the, brought, instead of taking people to the mountain, we brought the mountain to the people. That makes sense. Okay. The more niche you can be or the need that you aim to, that, to solve problems, that's what you should look at. Look at what the biggest 10 or 12 issues your niche is facing and then find experts to solve that issue or find speakers that can talk about specifically about that aspect. That's exactly what I did with the mass media podcast. And I figured, okay, what's the biggest question? People need help with monetization and, and, and marketing. So that's why we focus on it. Not the, how do you start a podcast? Okay, that's not what I do. It's also why we're like, okay, what did I, why do we do a mini summit? Well, people want to dip their toes in the water before they dive in. So we started a one day mini summit to help people give a, a way to kind of dip their toes in the, in the water and go from there, okay? Now, the big thing, if you do a free event, you're going to have a lot of more signups, but you're going to have very low attendance, very low engagement. I've talked to some people who have done free events or free online events. They had like 1,500 people sign up, but only like 10% of people showed up. And that's because like, uh, I can catch the replays later on. You, if you're doing your speakers a disservice, especially if they're taking time of doing a free event, because <clears throat> you may be filling the funnel with a lot of dead wood. They haven't had a buying decision. I'm not saying people won't buy, but if they're not invested in the event, they're not going to show up and you're going to have a much lower attendance and lower conversion rate. <clears throat> As, you know, we call them prize picks. People will show up for the free prizes and then not do anything. Okay. Now a paid event, even if it's like 10 bucks or 99 bucks, we've had paid anywhere from um, 19 to you know 900 bucks for an event. <clears throat> yes, you'll have a lower signup rate at the higher the price, but you'll have a higher percentage of attendance. So one of the things that you want to do if you're going to do a paid event is you don't necessarily want to do it at 997. You may want to have three different, different ticket levels, a, a starter for like 97 bucks, a mid-level that maybe includes the replays or includes some other bonuses, and then a kind of an all-you-can-eat buffet or a, a, an advanced ticket price, something that falls with some coaching or things like that. That will help at people figure out, okay, how does this fit into my budget? You know, you'll see this from a lot of the events. Like I'll, the traffic conversion stuff is a big event was just canceled. You know, the intro ticket was like four ninety seven, the extra early bird, but their VIP was like twenty five hundred bucks. I'm like, I'm not gonna pay for the VIP. I'll just pay for the intro because I know most of the people in the VIP anyway. <laughs> okay. Does that make sense? Does this answer your guys' questions? We'll die. We 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 go through a lot more things at the end there for you. But literally, here's the thing: is you've got to market, you've got to market, you've got to market. You can't just do it once and expect people like to say to fall over or want to throw a credit card to your face. You've got to expect people that they need to see it multiple times. And they also got to see it multiple times. Think how many times you see an ad for McDonald's before you decide, oh, yeah, I bought McDonald's tonight. Or, hey, there's this, you know, you know, events going on. You got to see it a couple, couple times, provide different types of marketing. It can't be the same type of marketing. One thing that works really well when we got 30 to 60 days out is that when we get speakers, we announce the speakers are coming. This will create infographics for them. Or we'll take, um, well, this works really well, is we'll find – We'll make a brainstorming list of all the different movies that fall in our category. Like with us, it's finance or real estate. And so we'll find movie images and, and use some sort of quote. Like one thing that's been really popular we did beforehand was when Tony Romo hurt his uh, shoulder, we did an image like him in a sling saying, hey, now I got more time for my note in real estate investing. I can show up for this event. You know, we use people love popularity, pop culture. So I think you can mix pop culture into your event with your marketing it's going to come in really handy for you. It's going to help set yourself apart versus, hey, just sign up for the Noteworthy Investor Summit or just sign up for another summit, okay? Blech. Okay? Two, myth number two, the networking sucks. Here, it can. It can totally suck if you don't know what you're doing, okay? And this is the really big thing. You want to enable your people that are attending the opportunity to network without it being difficult. And so one of the things that we do uh, is you can do a lot of other things for networking besides just simple handshakes and having a cold beer at the bar. Okay, don't get me wrong, that's still a very effective way of networking, but you just can't do it in person on a virtual event. So we like to create Facebook groups or Facebook pages that people can go in and network and share things. You know, uh, that's been very, very popular. It's actually an added bonus a lot of times. Say, hey, you've got, when you sign up for this virtual workshop, you'll have access to 900 investors who've also gone through the same class or workshop. 
Um, you want to use some sort of software like Zoom. I like using Zoom because it's got the ability to add for Q&A for people to ask Q&A. They also have a chat role where people can go and usually chat back and forth with themselves and with others. Uh, it also, also has a place for virtual rooms. If you want to open up a virtual room where people can go over and network or, or talk with a speaker. Um, you can use Basecamp groups. Well, I love Basecamp as a nice online portal where you can upload files to, videos. People can ask questions. Um, you, know, we can create, you can create a members area as well for people to go over and talk with. Um, I, I think the most effective thing that a lot of people love is the ego stroke. And what I mean by this is we'll do like a bonus day beforehand. Like we'll say, hey, come on out and check the, the, the virtual online summit and we'll do a, a, a tech check. You know, we'll go through the manual. We'll go through the schedule. We'll go through some of the bonuses and share that live like I'm doing right now with you guys. Or we'll do a, uh, you know, hey, what's your biggest needs of the morning? Um, or we'll do at the end, you know, hey, what was your, the biggest thing you learned the day before? Or we'll do the last hour of using the first day. Uh, we'll just do a live networking where I'll bring people on live. It's like, hey, Jim, I see you on there. Let me bring you on live. We can talk about who you are and what your business is, you know. Um, Beth, let's talk about what you're doing. Brett, hey, you're, tell us what the capital gains tax solution is all about and bring them online for a couple of minutes to ask questions or share what's going on. That's a really viable thing because then it starts to put a face with a name for a lot of things. Um, we used to do use chat roll was a nice cool thing we used when we used to do just Google Hangouts, but we would end up breaking it down because we'd often have too many people on the chat roll. <laughs> but it's still, it was smaller, but it's still a possible thing to do. Um, I like, I think one of the best things is, is doing a survey of those that sign up. We usually will see about a 20 to 40% um, of the signups actually fill out a survey. And that's, I know that's usually unheard of because we do a variety of things. We like to ask questions and a lot of times they fill out the survey, we'll give you the survey results. And so we wanna make sure, and we'll usually have 20 to 25 questions on the survey. Hey, what's their social profiles? How many deals they've done? Do they have an IRA account? Do they have an LLC? We really ask specific questions so we can help filter. You know, how many deals have you done in the last 12 months? What's your biggest goal for the year? What's your biggest need? We like to ask those hot questions so that we get people to fill that stuff out. That leads to really great stuff for us to go in and say, okay, hey, uh, John Smith, you know, or Scott Myers. Hey, Scott Myers, you're speaking on this. There was 65 people that said they're interested in the self-storage side. It also works after the event by taking that survey of being able to say, hey, you, if you missed this, here's the special replay of Scott Myers talking about self-storage. Or, hey, you're looking for owner finance notes? Hey, here's Dan Malcolm on his specific subject. Or, hey, you're looking for Molly, you're trying to figure out ch uh, checkbox? Hey, talk to Molly Mahoney, here's her replay. So anytime you can add that in, that's a really great way to help boost the, the networking. You know, a lot of times we'll give away the registration list, like, listen, hey, sign up, stick through all the way through the day, and we can tell who shows up. If you show up all three days, we'll give you the registration list. So you add it, okay? Um, you also, too, can promote local things. If you start seeing where people are located from, this is one of the things, big things that we do the night before uh, an event. It's, okay, where is everybody coming from? What parts of the, the country are they in? Oh, hey, you're in Seattle. Well, hey, go check out the Seattle Real Club. Oh, hey, you're in Lubbock, Texas. Go talk. Uh, I need to introduce you to Levi and Jenny Rudder, who are in Lubbock, Texas. Okay? Or, hey, they've run a meetup group that Nicholas was checking out. Or, hey, there's, you're in Temple. Go see Charles Wilson. He runs a great meetup group in that Or, hey, you're in, in, in Orlando. Hey, go to the Central Florida meetup group. Or, hey, you're in Florida. Go talk to the Florida Podcast Association. It's all about knowing where your audience is at. And then, hey, just sharing. Hey, here's the opportunity for you guys to meet in person. Or, hey, even one other thing. Hey, well, there's a big event coming up. One of our, got, one of our speakers hosts their own in-person in event, their own in-person expo the first weekend of November. Go check it out. Here's a discount code for you, okay? Um, another thing is people really love panels. Panels do well, but you don't want to make your entire event panels. Oh, there's an event, a big event in our real estate industry that's all panels. You know, I don't want to sit through 12 panels in a day. Keep, if you're going to do panels, those are usually the highest rated show up, but you do them once or twice a day at max, okay? But it's a great way to get Q&A, to really get people asking questions and networking after you. You want to make sure and leave plenty of time for your panel, uh, for Q&A for your panel. Yes, I don't like to have 12 people on a panel. I think two or three people, maybe four at the most, but make sure your panels are now, are not 10 minutes, not 20 minutes. Make sure your panels, give your panel speakers enough time to share who they are, Okay. Um, and promote scheduling. You know, some of the things that we've done at other events is when speakers came on, we actually said, okay, hey, if you'd like to schedule some time one-on-one -on -one to speak with Brett, hey, go to this link and schedule your time on Monday or schedule your time on Sunday. 
Uh, he's only speaking today, so you can schedule tomorrow and later on. So schedule that one-on-one, -on -one, that 15 minute, 30 minute phone call with him as well. So that works out really as well. And encourage people to share. Hey, send an email out to everybody or connect with people. And one of the things that we like to do is make sure they can get everybody's LinkedIn profile so that they can go on and connect with people on LinkedIn, communicate that way. So there's a lot of great ways that they don't have to be in person drinking beer or sitting in the hallways. They can be there joining you. Now, not everybody's going to attend the entire time. You're going to have some people get off network and start networking. That's fine. They're going to do that anyway. You might as well add value and eliminate the craziness of them trying to do it themselves. Then just say, hey, here's a list. If you show up the entire time, you're going to get the list. Okay. Um, here's another thing. You can't monetize. You can't monetize your time or you can't, uh, you know, you can't make sales on this. They're not going to be effective online. Well, that's, that's a lot of bullshit. I, I literally, yesterday I went to the, uh, my office, there was three checks uh, from affiliate splits from an event that I did two years ago. Okay. You can monetize. There's a great way to monetize your time. Um, obviously, we talked briefly about that ticket sales. You want to have three levels of tickets, a base, a bonus, a buffer. You also want to offer up some discounts, some extra early bird, some early bird stuff, and then you know go from there. Maybe offer up a special uh, discount code to some of your speakers or your vendors or even some of your biggest fans. You know, hey, you're a big fan. You want a, t a discount? We'll give you an affiliate split. You can sell sponsorships on your online event, anywhere from 100 to 10,000 I've seen done, okay? Uh, the beautiful thing when you have different speakers coming on, you're gonna have usually breaks. I might like to monetize those breaks. Hey, we got a 15 minute gap or 10 minute gap, we're gonna pull up a slide and just promote that person or promote that vendor, okay? Or you can have somebody, if they're doing, you've got two Zoom rooms, hey, go on over to the Potitize room or go on over to the Lisbon room. And, and there, you know, there's all you know, great things. You could put a manual together, a PDF and sell, sell sponsorships of that. Oh, a quarter, half page is a hundred bucks or full page is 500. Or hey, uh, sign up as a sponsor and we'll make sure to put a, a two, one or two questions into our survey to ask our audience. Or hey, we'll send you the list afterwards for five grand, okay? Um, you can do an affiliate split with services. Hey, 30 to 50% affiliate split off your vendors. If you're selling something, great. Give me a, uh, an affiliate split or give me a discount code, something we can track that I get a discount towards, you know, services, okay? Very, very common for those two things, okay? You can sell speaking spots. I know one person's doing an online event and they're selling speaking spots for 1,500 bucks. I'm like, wow, but they're not taking a split of sales. Um, they're selling virtual booths for 600 where they're gonna do a 15 minute session for everybody that signs a booth, they get a 15 minute to pitch their services, their vendor, they're not gonna have a full hour long session but they're still being able to get their word out in front of 400 people from the comfort of their own home or office, okay? That's a beautiful thing. What's really common, if you got a really good speaker, they'll often do a 50-50 split with sales. So if they sell a class for 997, you're the promoter of the event, the, the summit, you'll get half, uh, get half of that. Um, one big thing about monetizing, the last thing you wanna do is piss your listeners off or your attendees off, that it's a, a nonstop pitch fest, pitch fest, pitch fest, pitch fest. You don't want that, okay? So I'm a big advocate of only having, uh, or, or really only allowing a third of your speakers, the actual speakers, to sell something. And you want their speech, their hour or hour 15, to be 75% content and 25% sales at the end. Now, if somebody's the other way where they're 75% pitch, only 25% content, get rid of them. Don't bring them back on. I have actually cut people short in the past when they were just pitch, pitch, pitch no content. I actually interrupted their discussion. Listen, no offense, man. You need to get some content or I'm going to boot you off. And they didn't like it, but my audience loved that. The, the people that were on there, they loved it. They're like, oh my God, thank you. When's this guy going to get some meat and potatoes? Okay. Um, but a third of your speaker. So if you've got six sessions in a day, only allow two to sell. Let the other four come in and offer services, experience, um, testimonials, case studies, things like that. It's a, a really valuable thing to help you value. So when you do offer something, it does that as a value versus like, oh my God, who's this guy pitching, okay? Also, if you've got, you, there's times that you don't ever want to sell to add value to things. If you're doing a, a one-day event, never sell the first half of the day. It's just not good to do. You want to deliver that pure content and add really val good value to the people that are attending. Now, if it's a multi-day event, just don't even sell the first day. Three-day event, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, fill Friday full of content, and then you can bring on speakers that are going to sell on Saturday and Sunday. Okay. That's the thing to do. Uh, and each day is a little bit different on how they sell. So like a, uh, a really popular time frame is before lunch or after lunch of a live event. It's the same thing of a virtual event before or after lunch, whenever that time is or the end of the day, 
a keynote, like at four o'clock, five o'clock, whatever that time is, those are prime spots. If you've got a big speaker, save those spots for your big speaker. If you have a big name coming on, if you use, we use Zoom and we'll do two Zoom rooms, we'll make sure like, okay, we got like Sharon Lecter, co-author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. We don't want to have anybody else speaking at that time. So we make sure, okay, we're only having one session for this hour and a half or the keynote is sharing. Nobody else is speaking during that time, all right? So those are important prime, prime spots to really deliver value and content and, and go from there, okay? Myth number four is you can't replicate in person. Now this kind of goes with networking a little bit, but it's a little bit different. Here's the thing. I like to immediately look at and compare costs. What's it cost to travel? What's it cost for airfare? What's it cost for a hotel bill? What's it cost for time away from your family, time away from your job? Hey, don't worry about it. You can sit, keep us on while you're at home doing what you need to do. Save the 600 bucks round trip tickets or the $300 hotel bill or the, you know, instead of paying $1,500 for a ticket, our tickets are only $399 and you're going to have 75% of the speakers. Okay. It's a great way to think. Do the sessions live. This is the most important thing. People are like, oh my God, I don't want to do a live session. I'm just going to record it because they're embarrassed to ask the speakers. I'm like, no, you're doing all this promotion. Make the speakers show up. They can carve an hour, hour and a half out of their schedule, even if they're at another event. The last note camp we did, about half our speakers were actually at different events. They went to their hotel room, pulled up Zoom, logged in, gave a presentation, and they had more people attend their online session than those that were at the, actually at that hotel event. Okay. Now you can use the replays afterwards as bonus and evergreen, but do the sessions live. It's such more, so much more effective. It's great to have questions asked live. We even see on the replays a higher increased rate of engagement when they see that people are asking questions that were live on the event, okay? Do the session, it's not that hard to do. It's very easy. You don't have everybody in place. You, you know, just, it's easy there. Bring it, we talked about this before, bring on attendees online for Q&A. At the end of the day, beginning of the day, what's your biggest nuggets? Where are you from? That's an easy thing. So people can start recognizing faces. We talked about this earlier, but get the biggest needs and goals and experience levels so that you have a better way of connecting Okay. All right. Give people different options. Like, Hey, this session here is for a newbie. If you're, uh, and then the other session that's going on right now is somebody that's more experienced. So give them the, the track experience. Well, they don't have to just, you know, listen just to the one person. Well, I've heard this guy talk 12 times already. I'm going to log off. No, here's an option. You know, always have somebody doing a different segment. If you're going to do two live streams at the same time, Make sure the speakers aren't talking the same. Like I wouldn't want to have two self-directed IRA companies talking at the same time. That's horrible. Or two uh, self-storage. I'd want to have self-storage, maybe a notes guy or notes gal, stuff like that. Right? Um, like I said before, give the attendee list or survey results away. Because they're going to be, you got to think about it. If they're going around getting business cards at a live event, this is a way to help them not solve that. We talked about that before. But incentivize. Here's the big thing. Incentivize your attendees to share on social media. A lot of people will take selfies at an event and share pictures of a speaker. I do. Do the same thing. Hey, take a picture of yourself watching this. Or, hey, take a screenshot of a nugget that you really like. And then we'll give them prizes. Like, hey, here, we'll give a prize at the end of the day. Who, the, who is the most interactive person on social media? So we'll give like a daily social media with a warmer. And we've done where we've done a tub of love. What's a tub of love? That's where all the speakers throw in their product or something, money, books, giveaways. And then the person that's the most interactive throughout gets the tub of love. And that's a really good thing to keep people interactive and sharing. Plus, when people are sharing on social media, that's free advertising for you. When we do an online event, like a, a three-day, four-day event, we'll get close to a 1,000 or more posts and reposts or tags for our event. It's free advertising you can't buy. Okay? That is a beautiful thing. And not only it's like, oh, what's going on to this? Oh, I want more, okay? Um, like I said, you can always, hey, if you're in Orlando, go out this Thursday night to this event meeting. Or, hey, you're in, in Dallas, you're going to be at the Note Camp event or whatever like that, check us out there. Use, we'll send you a sticker. Or we'll send you a T-shirt that you can wear when you're there, okay? Don't be afraid to ask your audience to share because they will, okay? They totally will. Does this make sense, everybody? Most people forget totally about this. Most people never create a, a hashtag. Hey, make sure you use the hashtag. It's like, yeah, they just don't even mention it. And we like to bring it up. Hey, make sure, make sure you're, you're sharing your biggest nuggets or you're doing end of day recaps. You know, hey, we're going to give away something substantial. Hey, get your three of your favorite books or we're going to give away a whole media package or we're going to give you a, a, 
a one-on-one -on -one training worth 15 grand to come in and spend a couple days with me. Those are all really great things. And most of the time they don't be evergreen. They don't really cost you much of anything, but they do add value to your audience. Okay. Uh, this is the thing. The speakers won't show up. I'm like, that's horseshit. <laughs> speakers will show up. Okay. An easy way to do that is just figure out what's going to work in their schedule. And so one of the other things that I like to do is when I'm hosting a two day, three day event, I'll just create a custom calendar schedule with sessions every hour, hour 15. And that's why I send it to them. Like, Hey, book your spot. Okay. Book their spot and then go in and book it. And they'll say, okay, what's the name of your presentation? Do you have a link? What's your, give me your, your headshot. Very easy to do. You know, giving you, you know, all that stuff. Easy to do to set it up there. And the thing is, with Calendly is they'll get a 24 hour reminder. They'll get an hour reminder, a 15 minute reminder automatically for you to text message or email how you set Calendly up. And that's a beautiful thing to help coordinate to make sure that the speakers show up. Now, in the rare case that you don't have a speaker show up, you always want to have one or two presentations in your hip pocket. Okay. One or two presentations in your hip pocket. And look, you may create a manual and something will happen. Act of God. All right. Hurricane. Flights will get delayed. Person gets delayed coming in. That's fine. Hey, we'll often know um, be, and be able to switch somebody around at the last minute. It's great to have a schedule. It schedules a guide, not the, the hard uh, fact. Once you print something or create something, eh, it can always be, it can always be changed. The beautiful thing is to say, hey, we've just had a little bit of an error here, but so-and-so is going to be on tomorrow night. Or we're going to do a special session just for them because of, of something happened, okay? But speakers, like I said, 99% of the time, they want to show up. They want to be there, especially because if you, they don't have to lug – product off they don't have to fly across the country they can kill two birds from one stone especially if they're another event speakers love this uh, another thing i tell speakers how we're cross promoting them like hey we're going to promote this on social media we're going to promote this via email we're going to process across my platforms we're going to turn this into uh video replays that go out to our database or we're going to turn it into a podcast afterwards in about six months we have a, like a three four wave approach to do an event afterwards so they like, oh, yeah, I want to be a part of this. I had one guy completely fill, forgot to fill out his calendar. Like, he's like, oh, my God, Scott, I totally spaced. All your sessions are full now. Can we pre-record something? You add me to the replays and I still will promote? I'm like, yeah, sure, that'd be great to do, okay? The um, thing we like to use a calendar schedule is it allows them to fit it into their schedule. Now, occasionally you'll have something like, oh, I can't make it. This is the only time I have available. And I'll try to swap with somebody and work with somebody out there. I'll schedule it. You always still want to send them an email reminder the day before and then also have it set up where a 15-minute email goes out prior. Whether through Calendly or you're sending them a text message or an email, you got it pre-set up as well with the link that they need to have. Um, big important thing, I like to leave 15-minute breaks between speakers. Most of my sessions are an hour 15, an hour for content and 15 minutes for Q&A, for pitching, and then we have a 15-minute break because it gives people plenty of time to get up, go to the bathroom, come back. It also allows that we have a lot of questions, a little bit of fudge time in between. that we like, okay, this ran an hour 20. So we, it also gives us that extra factor in case somebody has tech issues. They're having a hard time getting logged in. We get them logged in and make sure everything's looking good, get their PowerPoint up and, and rock and rolling. It leads to some great interaction too from people that your listeners may not see because they may think, you know, that's what happened in a green room in a live event, but they actually works in your favor of seeing having conversations see that the person speaking is exactly like he is talking to you as he is speaking. So that actually helps in monetize. Ask them to promote, ask your speakers to promote. Uh, many of them won't do it. So you've got to realize you've got to promote it, but what you have to do, people want to promote. They just don't want to have to create the stuff. So create the infographics, cr create the email templates that go out, get them out ahead of time, get them their special discount codes. People will promote if you give them the stuff. The bigger names probably won't, but you shouldn't have to promote, you need your bigger names. If you're creating these infographics and you go post to social media and tag them in it, or in the groups that they have, a lot of times their listeners will see that or audience will come across and sign up. As I just said, create images and promote, tag them to your audience and social media. Email blasts blast as well. Uh, here's the big thing. Friday, Saturdays, you always have higher attendance. And once you get to the point where you get beyond, we start having 300, 400 people sign up, you may want to go to two rooms. So you can double your speaker. So if you had, instead of having just seven on Saturday, uh, Friday and Saturday for 14 sessions, you could have two rooms. So you now have 28 sessions, more, double the value. So if somebody's seen Jim speak on self-storage, they could jump over and listen to um, Aaron Young on asset protection. Okay. Now Sunday is always the lowest attendance ratio because of holidays, you know, 
church, things like that. So we only need to do just one Zoom room on Sunday, but it's a higher conversion rate. People always have better sales on Sunday because they're the only one speaking and people are ready to, to promote as well. Yeah, or people are ready to buy at that point because they sat through things like, oh, this is a really good deal. So really keep your heavy hitters to Sunday if they can or during the other sessions we talked about before, okay? Another thing that's good, uh, technology is too hard or expensive. Hang on one second. So technology is too hard or expensive. I'm sorry, it is not too hard or expensive. Anybody can do this, okay? If you can run a Zoom room, you can, if you can log into a webinar, you can set this up. Don't give me the BS, oh, it's too difficult for me. That's crap. Uh, it's easier than ever to use. And like I said, I use zoom.us. It's, you have a free version all the way up to, I think we pay $150 a month plus taxes. But we use it on a regular basis. It makes us money on things like that. Um, you need to have good internet. You need to have a webcam. And you don't even need a webcam if you don't need to. You just need to have good internet and a microphone for the most part. But for to bring people on, like I'm using a Logitech HD 1080 webcam and I'm using a Blue Yeti. You could even get away without using Blue Yeti and just have a good set of headphones if you want to do that. So those are the three integral parts. Having good internet, webcam, microphone. Make sure it's also in a quiet spot as well if you can. So you don't want to do it in a noisy room. I have had some speakers come on where they were traveling and they had to do it a little bit. So I want to make sure they were on a headset so we got to a quiet spot to make sure. Um, you always want to make sure and get uh, Zoom is really great because you can add panelists. You can add up to 10 panelists. Uh, actually, more than that, 20 panelists. And it sends them all their own custom link. So when it comes up, it's got their name on it. Same thing with... Um, you can create 20 uh, track, uh, we'll get to that in a second. You can actually turn your attendees to, so like some of you, I can turn you into a panelist, bring you on live, talk with you. You know, I can allow you to use your webcam and we can share. Easy to do, that's what I love about Zoom, relatively easy to do. Um, you can use custom registration links. So like I like to create links for when I post something. So if I'm gonna post a marketing piece on LinkedIn, I create its own unique tracking mechanism. Same thing for Meetup, same thing for Facebook, same thing for my email. Uh, my last event, Mass Media Summit, I had 20 speakers. They all got their own custom registration links so I could see who actually promoted, how many people clicked on it, how many people converted from there, and who didn't. It was a great way to track affiliates and see who really was going to help you or who wasn't for the next time around. Okay. Um, it's easy also to ask polls and surveys like, hey, how many of you guys have closed a deal in the last 60 days? Or how many of you are looking for private capital? How many have a self directed IRA? Easy to do that as well. Always is important record your sessions and you can also live stream to Facebook or YouTube. Like right now we're recording the session so then I can then throw it up on YouTube later on. It is going live on Facebook. We see some people, I see Charles, Levi, Kevin and have watched on uh, Facebook as well. We can take questions from Facebook. It's a great way to gauge extra bonus people to watch what's going on and communicate or even people to opt in and sign up for something from one of your speakers because it's on Facebook. Yeah, they may be getting the content for free, but at this point, Hey, the extra eyes are better than no, no eyes, okay? Um, my buddy, Mark Wade, he does a, a software called virtualsummits.com or Virtual Summits Live is a thing he does. He does it where it basically houses everything and you can stream, restream or zoom through it, but it handles some of the other scheduling stuff. Uh, it's usually like $97 a month for his intro version. He's giving away four months for free right now. Uh, so if you go to virtualsummits.com and use the code HOPE2020, you'll be able to sign up for stuff for free for the next four months. So that's a beautiful thing. Wade, uh, Dr. Mark Wade, a uh, buddy of mine, he's had me on his podcast, but on mine, actually his episode came out today about some things that he's doing with virtual summits. Um, great guy. And he had an event in uh, Louisiana and New Orleans uh, about two months ago that I was able to attend and, and really got some great stuff from as well. But it's it gotten easier and easier and easier. You don't need to have a big budget. That was one of the great things when we went to a virtual summit from a hotel event, our eight to $12,000 overhead disappeared for an event and it became less than a thousand bucks. It's a big difference. You know, that's a big, big difference in going to an online event versus in person. You re immediately lose a need to have <laughs> a room block, an F and B block. Um, you're not as stressed out to put butts in the seats to get people to sign up for hotel rooms. A virtual event, I don't care where you're at, whether you're on Mars, the moon, your hot tub, your office, your home, it does not matter, okay? Um, here's the big thing. My list is too small. People worry about, I don't have a list. Yeah. You just cross promote to where your audience is at. Think about where your, your, your ideal listener is. What are you answering? What is your clients and where do they spend time? Are they on Facebook? Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Twitter? Um, if you don't want to know where they're at, you can always go out 
uh, and, and do some different things. Like you could just create an ad on Facebook at one a day and target your fans and their friends. You could jump on LinkedIn, LinkedIn groups, start promoting 30 to 60 days out. You can leverage your peer networks, other people. Hey, here's a, an affiliate. Um, you can see if there's a big event going on, you could geo-target that local event. Like if you're in a real estate community, hey, Fortune Builders puts on these big summits that you can target. Grant Cardone, if you're an entrepreneurial network, he put on a big event in Vegas, about 10,000 people. You geo-target and sell a discount code to them or a, a discounted rate for that as well. Um, worst case, you purchase a list. I know a lot of people are doing this. They're going, like if you're a podcaster, you can go over to listennotes.com and purchase a list of podcasters. They'll give you their contact information, things like that. You can also use like Melissa Data, Exact Data, Dot com are two websites that we have used in the past to buy lists, like anywhere from six to 14 cents a lead, really cheap. We give them some specifications of what we're looking for and things like that. And, and there's so many list companies out there. Thousand bucks will buy you 16,000 names. If you have a 1% conversion rate on 16,000, that's 160 people. Okay. Yes, there's a way to do this. That's why you want to start 30 to 60 days out of how to link them in because you can't email all of them immediately, but there's a lot of ways to convert those over time. Okay. You can hire a VA to scrub different websites for you, different vendors, scrub groups. That's relatively simple. 300, 700 bucks to do that off of fiverr.com. Um, I am a bigger fan of aligning with associations or companies that have a big list companies in my field, companies in my niche that I work with and having them help promote it. A lot of them will have email blasts. They send out once a week. They'll have a you know, list of where their, their company's gonna be at and where their company's gonna be speaking at. Those are great ways to promote your list and offer a special discount code to their listeners, okay, or their clients. And oftentimes they'll have groups or lists or other things that they'll send out to, phenomenal way to market to. You wanna make sure you get on that list and those calendars way ahead of times. But the most important thing is just start somewhere. If you have 10 people on for a day, that's 10 more than you ever had. If you got 30 on, great. When I started it, I was like, okay, let's see what we got. 75, I was like, oh my God, that was the easiest event. It was easy. I got to sleep in my own bed at night, eat my own food. When I, it ended at six, it was done <laughs> for the day. I could go do my fun things. It wasn't a way for my family or friends to do that stuff as well. But start somewhere, okay? You got two people, three people, 10 people. It's, you got to realize starting somewhere is better than nowhere, okay? Now, a lot of people do the free event and they'll give these huge names, but if nobody shows up, I'm not a big fan of it. Yeah, it's a list scrub. This grab, but you're going to have a high opt-out radio ratio and those things. I'd rather have somebody who's actually paid. 30 paid people would beat 300 freebies all day long. Okay. And the most important thing is pick speakers who add value, not people who are just there for their own list grab, but people are really going to show up, deliver content. Um, you know, offer, offer to them to, you know, their followers or free opt-in. Like I had one guy who's got a mastermind. I said, listen, you're guys that are in your mastermind. I don't want to charge. I just want to, get them for free because I know they've already paid 15 grand to be part of your thing. They're serious. I think it'd be valuable to have them there. So let's just give you your mastermind members a free ticket because I want to do that. You know, those are great ways. If you're speaking somewhere like, Hey, I've already got 300 people. Let me ask me about you 40 to it for free. Those are great things that you can do to drive lists of networking, meetup groups, things like that. All right. LinkedIn groups are a big thing. Okay. Here's another thing. My audience won't show up. Okay. And you got to realize, we talk, this goes back to really one of the first ones, 80% of sales is made after the fifth contact. You've got to stay in front of people with everything that's going on. Stay in front of them. Hey, we're going live. We're going live. We're going live. Text message, market them. Send them an email, social media. Hit them in different places, okay? The average webinar, if you do a webinar, just a straight up one night webinar, do it on a regular basis, you're going to see about a 50% attendance ratio. That's normal. You get anything above 50, you're doing well. 60, great. 70, you're killing it, okay? We, we are right around the 62 mark. Sometimes it dips ups and dips down for the most part when we do a webinar. Every Monday night, for the most part, we do a regular webinar, okay? Paid events will have a higher attendance percentage, okay? 70 to 90% will show up and they'll add value. Why will they add value, be there for value, they're much more valuable? Because they're committed. They've got some investment in a paid event, whether it's a dollar, or a thousand bucks, they've got some investment, whereas zero free events have a low, usually 50% or less attendance and low value, low conversions on stuff like that. So that's the thing. That's why it's, hey, listen, you don't want to waste your time just doing something for free, monetize it of some sort, okay? Add value. Um, if you need to do an off a free event, do a free webinar, do a free bonus day to a paid event. Like, hey, 
I'm going to do a free half day event. And we did that for our master. We did a half day. Hey, we were going to bring on 30 podcasters to pitch their podcast. It led to 48 more people signing up for the three day event because we did a bonus day. They got to see some of the cool things we talked about, different things we accentuated. Hey, here's why this is a value. This is why you want to sign up. Hey, and guess what? Here's a bonus discount ticket for you. Okay. You can do like bump sales. So there's an easy thing that we love doing, starting off at a dollar. And every time it goes up, somebody signs up, it goes up by a dollar bump. Or sorry, 20 and it goes up to 21 or whatever like that. We've done other bonuses. Like, hey, sign up today for a dollar. Go through the full thing. We'll charge your card or the other 198 for the 199 ticket. Uh, we give veterans and first responders a free pass to a lot of our events. Why? Because they've already committed. <laughs> you know, somebody's a, a military vet, past or present, I'll comp them in my workshop. Same thing, first responder, officer, EMS, fire, we'll comp them in, okay? Um, another thing that's been valuable too, if you know, if you were in a, in a niche where there's other events going on, we send an email and say, hey, if you've ever signed up for somebody else's event and we're happy, just send us the receipt and we'll comp you in. <laughs> Oh, you weren't happy with his or her event? Just send us the receipt that you paid for their event and we'll comp you in for free. And that adds a good chunk of people at the end. We don't do that all the time. We'll do that like once a year. But it's still, it's kind of a fun thing. Like, oh my gosh, you, you deliver so much great stuff for your events. So worth it. Okay. And the thing I do ask if I'm comping people in is I'll follow up with, hey, if you really, thanks for attending. Really love a testimonial from you. And that works for after the event. Okay. Um, but the thing is too, you, like you said, you've got to follow up with daily reminders. Hey, we had a great day one. If you missed day one, hey, make sure you show up at 9 a.m. day two. Same thing, 30 minutes before day two starts. Hey, we start in 30 minutes. Same thing, text messages, emails. Make sure you, you know, this is why we like to stream to a Facebook group so that if they can't make it, they can still watch on the Facebook group. And then I count that. It's like, oh, those are people that are actually eyes on their event. Whether it's the private group for just the event or it's an open to your, your page, Okay. Always, and this is a big thing I, we love doing, and everybody's always blown away when we do this. We set up Buffer and Hootsuite so that we take our infographics of all the speakers or all the sessions, and we have those blast out on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Pinterest, and stuff like that. We get that blasted out via Buffer and Hootsuite, and it goes out, hey, in 15 minutes, uh, Laura Blunt is going live on NoteCamp. Here's the link to watch her live. Okay. Or, hey, Juliet Clark is going to come on and show you how to rock. If you're an author or speaker, how to rock your lead gen. She starts in 15 minutes. Click here to join in and join us there. Okay. We set that up days before. Okay. You know, I'm not doing it the minute of the day, day of the event. We set up where it automates buffer. You could do basically most of it with a free account. Same thing with Hootsuite. Easy to do. It adds an extra bonus. We're like, oh, you get a few people that opt in. Okay. Um, but the thing is, even if your audience doesn't show up, if they registered, most of what you're going to do is going to happen after the event. This is what separates okay events from amazing events is the follow-up. It's all in the follow-up. Yeah, I signed up. We had a chunk of people that know that, my God, I know you have this great stuff, Scott, but I can't make it or I got something scheduled or my wife we're going on vacation. I'm like, look, sign up. We'll send you the replays and we'll follow up with you afterwards. So people will sign up. They'll fill out the surveys. Even if they don't show up, We've grabbed that information. We know what their hot buttons are. We know what their experience is. Um, usually know what their interests are. So we, we can align that. Hey, they filled out the survey. Hey, I don't have a self-directed IRA. Oh, you don't have a self-directed IRA? Hey, Quest IRA, you need to tell all these 100 people that don't have a self-directed IRA. At least reach out to them. Or hey, you need help with a new LLC? Hey, we should reach out to corp. Here's your first replay you need to watch is Aaron Young with Lawful Associates about this corporate veil protection. So that's a, a very important thing is to follow up as, and if you're, your speakers or vendors aren't going to follow up, follow up for them. Say, let's jump on here. Let's, let me send an email out to these people. Some vendors sometimes aren't the smartest markers around. So you've got to say, here's what I would say. Here's what's so valuable about the list I'm sending you. Here, I've highlighted the people that you need to drop a phone call to and go from there. Okay. The most important thing too is people are asking questions on your social media pages or comments. Hey, have a VA or have an assistant or somebody jump on there and keep track. We'll do screenshots, pull those profiles or send friend requests or invite them. Hey, the replays are available if you want to take advantage of this. Okay. Um, I use LinkedIn. I use services on LinkedIn, Octopus CRM. I actually invite people to events. I'll invite 100 people, new connections a day. Hey, I got an event coming up. Here's a special discount for you. People will show up. If you get more than 50%, you're doing good. You get to 70 to 90% like we see, that's a really good day. That's, we're like, whoa, you had 90% people show up. 
I mean, 90% of people show up to something and you can track that relatively easy for you, okay? Now there's always, any questions about that stuff before we dive into kind of what's the three parts of successful summit? I know we've covered a lot of stuff here. Uh, we don't have much longer to go through, but what questions do you guys and gals have about those myths? Anything pop up that you are like, oh my God, okay, you answered that question, Under, understood that, okay? Any questions? No. Nope. All right. Well, we'll move on here. So there are three parts, as you may figure this out. There is the, uh, as we like to say, uh, it's just not the one day or weekend event. That's not the only thing. Yes, we seem to feel that often a lot of work goes into putting on something. A lot of work does. But getting to the event is just part of it. The before is 40% of everything that you do. The before the event, the promotions, getting up to the day that you go live, all of it is before. Okay, that's 40%. Honestly, yeah, it's the signups, the speakers, the theme, the creating, creating momentum, getting your sponsors on board. Uh, best way to live stream is just using Zoom. You're used, familiar with that, Brett. It works. It's the easiest thing to just live stream. Okay. Your replays, you can use Restream or, or upload to Facebook and do other things like that. But for as far as live streaming, Zoom.us, as we have found, is the easiest thing to do for the most part. Okay. The before, though, getting your sponsors, getting your speakers, getting your thing, getting your momentum building up to the event. Okay the marketing of the event, obviously, okay? Now the during, your one day or three day, is just 10%. It's really on autopilot. You've done the heavy lifting to making sure your speakers show up and you just follow up with them, making sure you hit record, making sure you hit stop record, making sure you field the questions and put the links in or make sure that you have the slides to advertising and for your sponsors in between the breaks. That's all real totally easy, okay? You just gotta make sure and, and, and deliver amazing content. And then obviously, like the last two days, Pre-sell your future event. Hey, I got early bird discounts. Most people forget all about offering up tickets to the next event. Why wouldn't you? If you've got happy people that are on Saturday and Sunday with an online event and having value, it's the, that's the easiest slam dunk sale. Hey, normal ticket price for $199. I'm going to offer up this at $99 for you right now. Boom. Easy way to monetize, okay? Now, during the event, you want to build buzz. That's why you're going to ask people to share their favorite thoughts or their favorite quotes or their favorite moments. Use the hashtags. That's the social media. That's like, like I said before, 500,000 or even 100 or even 50 posts people post. That's free advertising you can use to promote your next event. Look what so-and-so loved about our speaker. Or look what they love so much about it, okay? And then you have really the second half is all about after the event. It's all about the after event when it comes to 50%, okay? Follow up, follow up, cross-sell from the survey results. Keep your Q&As. You can download your questions and answer sessions from Zoom and see what people ask, who asked what, and follow up with your vendors like, hey, or your speakers, hey, this person, hey, if you missed this event, here's who you did. Like, if, I'll give you an example. If, uh, when we looked at survey that what their biggest need was, people was like, hey, learning how to market, boom, I'm gonna make sure that my um, replay on marketing for note deals is the first thing that they see. All right, and that may be like, hey, get into it one day. Or, hey, I need help with my asset protection. Boom, we need to have you talk to, you know, uh, look to attend Magnify Your Wealth. Or, hey, oh, I'm wanting to get into commercial notes or get commercial, what am I going to do with my commercial stuff? Oh, let's have you talk to Brett on his capital gains tax solution or his uh, deferred sales trust accounts, okay? Uh, yes, you can turn your event into an evergreen account or an evergreen event where it replays and you can promote to people off of social media, off of Facebook ads, that's an easy thing to do. Not hard at all. You're gonna see sales repeat if you upload it to YouTube or Vimeo or have them keep playing on things. Like I said yesterday, a thousand bucks showed up from three affiliates from the thing from a year, two years ago. It's a great way to see those little checks that come in. And you know what that we haven't talked about? Is you can take each one of those sessions and turn it into a podcast episode, turn it into a podcast after the event, all right? You know, bring on really great people and say, oh, I'm going to put this in as, a, you know, like a batch record if they all fall in line with what your podcast is about. It's a great way to build it. If you're, and this works for anybody. We've all got peers doing the same thing. We've all got people in our niches. Reach out to them. Hey, you've got a big listenership. You want to be a speaker on my, my summit. Yeah, I'd love to be a speaker. Everybody's looking for speaking gigs these days. Why not? And you know what? You don't have to travel. You don't have to jump on a plane. I had some people I've invited down to events like, oh, I can't travel. I'm like, it's an online event. You can travel to it. You know, I, 
totally. It's Saturday night. I know you can have time or Saturday or Sunday. We've got some options. If they tell you they don't want to be part of your online event, it's easily because a they just don't see the value. You probably don't want them anyway. They're not going. They're all stuck on themselves. Okay. So, but the thing is, testimonials and speaker survey. This is a big thing too. We send, we send out one more survey. We have the pre-survey and we have a post-survey where we say, hey, who, what speakers did you like the most? Did you attend? Yes. Or if you did attend, would you rank them one to five? Five star being great, one being the least. And then we will craft, okay, who's the highest rate speaker? Or if you didn't attend, no biggie. Who attended, who had the most attendees? Okay. And then the highest rank, we bring back. The ones that are lowest rank, we don't bring back. And we ask them, hey, what did you like about it? What did you dislike? And then the people will tell us, oh, they pitched too bad. Or they weren't professional. They were all over the place. This helps you streamline and already pre-build out your summit for next time. Oftentimes we do a summit we already have, and we finish with that summit, we already half our schedule already, half our speakers already planned for the next event. And the other half we bring in. We always want to bring on a third to a half new speakers anyway to keep it fresh. Yes, you want to have some of your staples, but don't have the same speakers over and over again. We see that happening especially in our niche, in the note investing world, we see a lot of people, the same speakers over and over and over again. Why am I going to spend money to hear the same discussion from the same people? Okay. So we've basically put together a really basic plan. And over the last five years of doing these, we've created a 60, 40, 20 plan. Uh, the before part, the pre-event is all the 60 point, 60 plus ways to promote your event. And we did uh, most of those 60 ways are free or minimal cost. We actually did a webinar on that 60 ways to promote your event or your podcast, whichever way we did it on a Wednesday night webinar. We also did it on Monday night because it's so valuable for our note investors as well, note students. That's out there available. Go listen to it on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, weclosednotes.com. Uh, I'm sorry, weclosednotes.tv will take you straight to our page. You'll watch that. It's about an hour long. We just deliver a ton of content on there as well. Uh, what most people don't know is though, what do I do during or after the event? Okay, and that's the summit part. That's the 40-20 plan. That's the other half, okay? Uh, we talk about 40 things to do during your event or to have ready to rock and roll during an event, okay? How to maximize engagement and monetization, how to make sure everything runs smoothly even when things go wrong, all right? That's a big plan that we've not talked about yet. Then, of course, the after party. Yeah, you got through the event. Now half the work begins. And we go through the 20 things to do after your event, how to make sure you're maximizing, how to make sure you're working with your affiliates, how to make sure you're maximizing sales and follow-up, how to follow-up, 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 how to use your survey results to cross-promote, cross-monetize. But most importantly, how to make sure you add value everywhere. If somebody tells you, hey, I need help with this, you're not, it's not a bad thing to say, hey, you need help with this, here's the person to talk to. Talk, that's a great thing. We don't sit here and spam people you say, oh, hey, you need help with this. No, no, no. Hey, here's a replays you asked for. Well, the replays are part of it. Here's what it is. And that's one thing, too. You can drip your replay. If people didn't pay for the replays, don't give them the replays. You can drip mark it out still once. So we're going to release this one video a day. Some people want to book, listen, book, watch again. Great. Pay for it. Otherwise, you can get one video a day as we share it. Okay. But also, hey, what are the things you need to do now to prepare for the next event? Okay. And so we've put together a, a summit playbook. We put together something to help you guys that are looking for this stuff, stuff that we have done on a regular basis, not something we're going to teach you an idea of an, a theory. We've done a lot of virtual summits, big one days to four days events and help some big, big things happen for some of our listeners. You can get my virtual summit playbook. Uh, it includes a hundred page, hundred plus page workbook that we're in the final stages of putting together. It includes sample posts, emails and marketing timelines, it tells you, we show you exactly, hey, here's what we mean by this. Forms, sponsorships, and speaker contracts. Uh, we'll even show you and provide you the discounts to the software and the vendors that we use uh, for when we're putting on things together, show you how we use that stuff as well. Uh, we also will throw in, we're also throwing in a two-day online summit, um, a weekend in April. I haven't decided, we've got two that we're finalizing, but that's what's uh, going through step-by-step step for two days. Hey, what do you do before, what do you do during, and what do you do after the event? and going through that and recording that and going through that step-by-step. Step. Not just going to say, hey, here you go. Go figure it out yourself. No, we're going to walk you through that step-by-step. Step. All right. And then we're going to also help you out as well, too. We're going to throw in three coaching calls, 30 minutes to an hour each, uh, to help you with your event if you're going to do an online summit of some sort. We're going to help you walk you through that. And as you're getting going, hey, you, you need help? Pick up the phone. Give us a phone call. What do I do next? What does this mean? Let's go through these three phases 
to help you with your event as well like that for you. And usually it's normally, on something like this, we'd normally do a 997 price pitch on something like this because there's value to that. Trust me, all the mistakes that we've made and all the things that we've overcome, much more value on that. We're going to do it half price off through the pandemic while we're basically stuck here. So basically for less than $499, I think $498.50 is the cost. But if you go to summitplaybook.com, and I should take you there. Discounts automatically included, summitplaybook.com. Um, that's the website. I'll take you straight to the checkout thing aspect of it. We'll have the workbook finished in just the next couple of days and have it out to you by next week. Uh, and then that way, once we get everybody in and signed up, then we'll pick out the best appropriate days for those in April. So uh, that's why we haven't picked a, a, a time frame yet. We know we're going to do it next month. We don't know if we need to do it in the beginning, the middle, or the end. Uh, but the replays will be available to that as well, too. So we just want to maximize those that get signed up to really, hey, what's the best weekend that works for you? I know, <laughs> not really going anywhere. Um, so we've got basically two, three weekends out of the month. If we have to do it first part of May, we'll do it first part of May as well, too. But I wanted to open up for any questions that you guys might have as well for you. Looks like we've already answered Brett's question, best way to live stream. Um, we'll walk you through that. And then, guys, if you're interested, too, you're like, hey, Scott, I, I, this seems like a lot of work. Can I have you help me out with that? We've got, we can jump on the phone and talk about what you're trying to do and go from there, too. But I think most people, a lot of things that we go through, this is, is – um, just need a the handbook. You need, okay, when do I do this? When do I start sending this out? When do I have to have this ready by? What do I need to say? Oh, you have a sample contract I can send. I just got to plug and play in the information. Great. You know, what do I charge for this? Or what do I set up for this? Here's how you set this up. Here's what you, here's what this looks like. You know, those are all included. That's why it's a hundred pages. Okay. hundred page workbook. And yes, if you need to, we'll print it out and ship it to you. <laughs> all right. Any questions, comments, concerns, guys and gals out there for you? Was this valuable? Was it valuable going through this stuff? Yes or no? I mean, I'd love to know if it was or wasn't. Uh, I believe it was just because it kind of goes through the different things you have to do beforehand. But look, I know there's events that are getting canceled all the time. Stop them. Look, before we cancel, let's talk about doing a virtual summit. A lot of times it's easier than it can be. And you don't have to do all the things that we do. All right, so we wouldn't want to do all the things that we want to do. Thank you, Judy, for saying that it was valuable. Appreciate that. It means a lot coming from you. The thing is, is just about every event can go virtual. I don't care how many speakers they have or how many vendors you have. There is some sort of fashion that you can still do something online virtual. And no offense, you're forced to do that now with the way everything is. Embrace it. The sooner you embrace it, the, the, the better it's going to be. Jim, thank you so much. Hey, bud, congrats on your uh, storage thing. I think it's going on right now. Um, hope you enjoyed it. You're doing a great job, Jim. Good stuff. Thanks, Jim. Met Jim actually in New Orleans there at the virtual summit thing. He's uh, the host of the uh, self storage summit. So, hey, thanks. Honored that you're on here, man. It means a lot. So, uh, thanks, Brett. I appreciate it, brother. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, that's it, guys. That's really all I have for you, unless you guys have some questions or comments or anything. Um, oh, chat is disabled. Um, just shoot me a. Oh, that's weird. Just you do Q and A, or you can drop me a message afterwards at uh, Scott at WeCloseNotes.com, or I can drop you. Nice chat, chat should be good. Where is it? Are you able to chat with me? That's what it is. Okay, yeah, just chat with me. Anyway, uh, any other questions or comments or concerns? Anybody? Virtual Summit Playbook. Take advantage of it. Like I said, half price through the pandemic. Uh, I'm not doing it for free. We've got too much work into it, and uh, but we still want to make it available for because there's value there. If you're, you know, like, oh, this is not going to, then fine. But we know the value's there. Thanks, John. Good to see you, buddy. Don hosts the uh, Texas Podcaster Association down in San Antonio. Also hosts the Sports PodCon that took place the day before PodFest in Orlando. Great guy. Uh, his wife makes these really cool uh, artwork where she paints like the intro, the audio sound, audio wave of your voice and artwork. Really kind of cool thing. So, like, John, I would think that you could do an online summit for your senior care stuff that you're doing and communicating and doing something about senior care, senior facilities, all that kind of stuff that goes along with it. Okay? Besides just a sports pod con, that would be something you could do as well online. Um, but I, I honestly think that... Uh, that would be the same thing. You guys all are exactly what we're thinking. Well, hey, drop me an email. We can talk more about that. Like I said, if you guys need help put something together, this is the first thing to go to. 
If you need a little bit more help, want some more hand holding because you don't understand it all, we've got some things that we can do as well to help you out with that. It's pretty affordable as well. Okay. All right, everybody. Well, hey, that is going to wrap it up for this evening. Uh, hopefully this was valuable for each and every one of you. Once again, go to summitplaybook.com, get signed up. Less than 500 bucks, you'll have the whole game plan of what we put together and really make your event kick ass and take names. All right. Have a safe evening. Be safe out there. And uh, we'll see you all at the top, everybody. Bye.